G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the Amscript function Retrieve Salesforce Objects. And I'll show you how it works in your emails and cloud pages to retrieve data from your connected Salesforce org. Now before we can use this function, we do have to have completed the Marketing Cloud Connect integration, connecting a Salesforce org to our Marketing Cloud instance. I've got a video which I'll link in the description below to show you how that works. Once we're all done, we can jump into the Salesforce documentation and we can see here the Retrieve Salesforce Objects. Now it's quite an easy function, it works in a very similar way to the Lookup Rows function in Emscript. What it will do is it will return a row set of data from our connected Salesforce org based on some parameters that we give it. So to start with, we have to declare what object we want to look for. Within that object, which fields we want to return is the second ordinal. The third, fourth and fifth are the Lookup conditions, the WHERE statement. We want to look up some information where something will be equal to, is equal to a less than or not equal to, and then the value to compare it against. As you can see in the example script below, we are looking up a lead object, returning back the ID, first name and last name, where the region equals West. So let's try it out for ourselves by jumping into Salesforce Marketing Cloud. We'll jump into the cloud pages, make ourselves a new collection, and within our collection, let's make ourselves a brand new landing page cloud page. I'll call this one the SF Retrieve for today. We'll go next and we'll just use a nice blank template. And once our page loads, we'll start off by dragging and dropping a HTML content block into our cloud page. And here's where we'll put our AMP script for today. So what we'll do is we'll look up a record within our contact object within our Salesforce CRM. Now I've got a sample record here. I've got Ms. Rose Gonzalez. You can see here a record that's been populated in my contacts. So I'm going to try and retrieve this contact information on my cloud page. So I'll jump back into my documentation and the first thing I'll do is I'll copy out that sample code. So I'll grab this usage code here, go straight back into my cloud page and let's paste it straight into our HTML. So to start with, we want to retrieve the object not from lead, but from our contact object. So I'll type in contact. Nextly, I can put in what fields I want to return. For now, first and last name is a pretty good one to return, so I'll leave it as that. For our condition statement though, where something is equal to something, I'm going to listen for where the ID is equal to the contact ID. So I'll try it out by putting where ID is equal to, and to get the record's contact ID, I can jump in to the sales card record, and I can copy the contact from the URL. The contact ID should start with 003 for contacts, and 00Q if it's a lead. So I jump back into my cloud page and paste their contact record there. With that done, I'm now going to return back that row set. Now, of course, just like a row set, I do have to then navigate that row set using the row and field functions. So below that initial statement, I'm going to have to put some more code where row set RS, I'm going to have to set my F name, the first name, we equal to the field within the row of my row set. Of course, I only want one row to be returned. The ID should be unique, of course, in that contact object. So of course it will be row one. The fields I want to return will be first name from that field. So I'll put first name in there as well, in quotes. Perfect. And this should now return the field of first name from the row set of RS that I've retrieved from our Salesforce object, just on the first row for first name. You can copy that down, of course. And let's also do last name. So I'll go L name for last name, looking up the last name value. Now those two things set, I can go below, let's make some space and I'll put in my first name is equal to, and let's output those values. I'll use my V function and I'll output F name, the first name. And I'll do the same thing below for last name using the L name value. Perfect. So now we should be able to retrieve our contact object, retrieving back our three fields of ID, first name and last name, where of course that contact records ID is equal to the provided ID. Great, let's try it out. I'll go schedule and preview, and let's have a look. Perfect, we have rows coming back in our data with our first name and our last name. So it's looking pretty good so far, but I'll go back and do one more thing. Let's modify this code to add another field in. Now, quick tip, you can use the Salesforce Investigator 
or the, uh, the Salesforce inspector, sorry, to listen for what the field name is for each of these fields. As you can see, the name field here, if I edit it, we do have first space name, but within our, our uh, object, it's actually called first name with no spaces. So what you can do is within your Salesforce, you can use that Salesforce inspector. It's a Chrome tool. You can use it and it drags this little side bit over here. You can use it to show all of our data on this record. When we do this, we actually get not just the label, which of course we know is first space name, but we get the field API name, the name we have to reference in our AMP script to return back that value. We also get the data type, which is really helpful for our comparisons later on. I've already got first name, I've already got last name. So what else could we get back on this record? If I go back onto rows, let's have a look at what else we have. So on Rose's details, it's maybe also get back, you know what, let's get back birthday. So to get back birthday, we'll find out what that field's name is by going show all data, and we'll look for birthday and birth date is what it's called, perfect. So I copy the field API name, go back into my cloud page, and let's add birth date to my fields to return. We'll also add birth date to my fields to listen to from the row set, and of course to output that birth date as well. Birth date, of course, being equal to birth date. All right, let's give it a try. We'll go schedule and publish, and let's see what it looks like. Perfect, so return back the 20th of November, 1969. If I check out Rose's record back in my sales cloud org, I should find, perfect, 20th November of 1969. Now, one thing to remember when using the retrieve Salesforce objects function in AmScript is that it is going to return back a row set for you. So in this example, I did use my ID field as my lookup. If you're using a different kind of lookup, for example, looking up all your records where the birth date is greater than a certain year or less than a certain year, you may return back multiple rows, which means you'll have to iterate through them using your loops and your row and field functions. If you're not sure how to use the loops, fields, and row functions, I've got some great examples on AMP script of how to do it, and I'll put some links in the video description below. Now, I know what you might be thinking, why would you use this lookup Salesforce objects function when you can simply use a lookup rows and look up your own contact object in your synchronized data extensions? Well, the reason is the sync data extensions only sync as often as your data source has been set to synchronize. That could be every 15 minutes or every hour while the Salesforce retrieve function is actually going to get that information as it is in that exact moment. I'll show you how that works. If I jump into my cloud pages, let's make a row lookup function. So I'll jump down here and I'll go set rows to be equal to lookup rows. I'm going to look up my rows of my synchronized data extension. So I'll jump into my data extensions, get my contact data extension. I'll look up contact data extension. I'm going to look up my data extension where the ID is equal to that subscriber's contact ID. Of course, once I have those rows, I'm going to need to get back their value. Now, for today, I'm just going to change their date of birth. So I'll use DE birth date as looking at my birth date in that synchronized data extension from the rows data, just like that. Now, show what's going to happen. I've got my birth date from my SF birth date. And below, I'll put my DE birth date. And I'll put the value as DE birth date. Now, before I publish this page, I'm going to jump back into Rose's record and modify the date of birth. I'll change their birth year from 1969 to 1970 and go save. So now the record's up to date. I've got the 20th of November, 1970. Jump into my cloud page and I'll go publish. And let's have a look what happens now. Okay, so my lookup data extension has actually returned back the previous data, while my SF retrieve function has returned the correct new data that I just updated. That's a great reason why it's important to use the lookup object function if you're doing things like preference centers with your Salesforce integration. That way you're always retrieving the correct real-time data and not what it could have been up to 15 minutes ago. And there we have it. That is a quick intro to the AMP script function retrieve Salesforce objects. Hope you enjoyed the walkthrough today and the examples I've given. If you have, please let me know with a comment below and a thumbs up on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.